Well, hello again. Um, to excuse the fact that I haven't shaved for a couple of days, I just thought I'd be a rebel. Ha! I'm continuing reading No Naked Walls, and we're on book three. Now you're the artist, deal with it. So this is actually chapter 42, but it's act one, scene three in the book. Lucy clears it for me to revisit the whistle and sketch any time I like, so long as I try to do it inconspicuously. This time the bouncer lets me in with a wink. Within a few minutes of setting up, a wirily, overly dyed, blonde-haired chap sits down right beside me. What you doing, sweet, eh? Sketching. Oh, really? Don't you ever need real models? These don't argue back and sit for a lot longer. Plus, they never need feeding or paying. I'll pose for you. I love stripping off. Where do you live? I'm not local. It's okay. I, I prefer these stiff ones. Oh, we all do that, love. I start drawing again, trying to ignore the chatter. The mirrors add an extra ambience and dimension to the figures. I get lost in the moment, which, as it so happens, lasts over two hours. Oh, you're so boring, peroxide blonde boy states. All you've done is sit there all day, scribbling away. I grin at him. Funny little shit, I think not. My free-thinking mind is crying out to tell him to piss off. But my conscience says, don't think that's a good idea. I smile without saying a word, lay down the sketchbook and put everything else in my bag of tricks. Finished. Time for a drink. Oh, yes, please. Large vodka, no ice. He doesn't give in, does he? I don't do men. Ever. Get it? Lucy said you were available. How disappointing. He walks off like a cat having been offered a bowl of the cheapest cat food. Cider, please. The barman nods. Wouldn't worry about Troy. He tries it on with anyone and everything. Shall I add a vodka to your tab to keep him happy? Only if you add something in it to silence him. A small one then, reluctantly giving in. The place is filling up and it's only 3.15 in the afternoon. Don't these folk work? You staying for the afternoon? Tea, dance, disco? All drinks half price? The barman asks. Thanks, but no. Hopefully the sun's still out. I down my cider and turn to leave, only to have Beth tap me on the shoulder. Keep your eyes off Lucy. Know what I mean? Seeing as she's trying to pimp me off onto one of your regulars, I think you'll find you're quite safe. Oh, he'd share the dog if it wasn't tied to a lamppost. Seriously, you've nothing to fear. Would you like to see what I've been doing? If you insist. Beth doesn't look interested in the slightest. So I pull out the sketchbook and I open it to show her the day's drawings. Holy shit, these are awesome. I thought you are after a bit of skirt. You really can draw. Well, thank you. You're forgiven. Drink. I was leaving, but go on then, the cider please. Two ciders, Chaz, says Beth. She turns to me and you can see the cogs whirring in her mind. We could do an arty class here. Fancy giving it a go? I'll pay you. Music to my ears. Any time to suit? I do have quite a free diary these days. Towards the end of next month then, I'll come by and uh, we'll sort it out. Let's drink to that. I clink glasses with her. Act one, scene four, which is chapter 43. A couple of weeks pass by. My mobile rings. I let it ring out. It rings again. Hello, it's me, Lucy. I need your help. You setting up for another blind date, Lucy? Beth's dumped me for another woman. Please, I really must see you. Not the whistle, though. Please come to the shop tomorrow at closing time. Don't say no. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Unless you're not doing anything later. I I I'm not trying to sound pushy, am I? Are you OK? No, not really. Her voice is wavering. I'll meet you in an hour outside the shop then. Oh, thank you. Thank you. My house is still calm. But it would appear on the other side of the door, the world for some is in the state of chassis, as Sean O'Casey wrote, I believe, in Juno and the Paycock. I stroll up the stairs and view my bedroom. It's still in carnage, with the wardrobe door hanging on one hinge, the bed linen still strewn over the floor, my clothes are flung all over the place. I ought to tidy it up, really. But you know what? I don't care. It'll wait till I return. I pick a jacket off the floor and put the hanger back in the wardrobe. I decide to walk into town. It's not far, and I try to make sense of something or other. Needless to say, I arrive outside the shop early, and Lucy runs out and hugs me very hard. Then she starts to sob into my chest uncontrollably. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I knew I could trust you. You don't. Joke. But you can. Come on, tell me everything. I have a great pair of ears and very broad shoulders. 
She starts by explaining it's her first girlfriend and she was never really sure if it wasn't just a dangerous lesson or love for another woman. She had boyfriends, but they were so immature by comparison. Beth had treated her like a princess, but had very quickly turned to domination in everything. What was worse, what she ate, what she did, what she had to wear, who she should see. She was feeling imprisoned and she thought she needed a mother figure to replace her mum. Now she was scared. A man and blonde woman approached me, wanting to know what was going on between you and me. She said I must be sleeping with you and, and told, me, told me she would have spells on me that would kill me. Then Beth saw me talking to her and things got messy. And then they were shoving each other around and pulling hair and stuff. And it was a cat fight. And it was awful. I've done nothing. Who was she? Why me? Now I've got nowhere to live and I'm scared. She goes on describing the Mad Hatter to a T. I'm afraid I do know who you're talking about. That's my very recent ex as from not long ago. The very one. And yes, she's bloody mad. Effing crazy, in fact. Having worked with women. For nearly 20 years, I've learned never to offer a male thinking instructive answer. What would you like to do? I don't know. What do you think? I am very nearly cornered. What are your options? Well, my dad's in Spain, says Lucy. Haven't spoken to him in years and my sister's in New Zealand. Well, maybe consider smaller steps. Have you no friends around that you can bunk up with for a short while? Beth took care of all of those, she says. Well, without wishing to sound like a dirty old man, I could offer you my guest room for a week to get yourself sorted. I don't want to put you out, but that would be fantastic. Thank you. I'm always thanking you. Yeah, yeah. Can you cook and are you tidy? Because if you're not tidy, I reduce your stay to 48 hours. Got it? We laugh and the very relieved young lass is saved for another day. Were you married ever? She says. Why? Does it matter? Well, you're sort of kind and nice. I've had my fair share of loonies. I grimace with the thoughts. I like calm. It's the new me and I'm trying to keep it that way. I'll find someone to suit you. Right, that's going to reduce your stay to 48 hours. You've been warned. Her boss steps out of the shop and lets Lucy leave early. See you tomorrow on the ball. Then she turns to me. Look after her. She had a very traumatic day. Right, oh boss. Come on, Lucy. We think she needs a drink. So we walk down the road, aiming for nowhere in particular and finding it after ten minutes. Here's perfect. I like the music, the beer, and it's never loud or outrageous. We walk into one of my gallery day's watering holes. Where have you been hiding? The barman pours me a beer without asking, follows it. And you miss? Vodka Red Bull, thanks. Gallery had to close, I said. Didn't you hear? Oh yeah, sort of. I tend to remember the important bits, like, how's the beer? I take a large gulp. <sighs> perfect. He leans over to me. Ain't she a bit young for you? I'm not with him, you creep, Lucy pipes up. She attempts to throw the contents of a drink over the barman, but I catch her arm in time. Whoa, 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 calm down, lass. That's a large vodka. He's an insulting prick. Indeed he is. Big feet, big mouth and no manners. Right, George? Fuck him, eh? Sorry, little un, was only teasing. If I don't pick on you, then I don't like you, right? It's me trademark. Tetchy bint, though. Next drink's on me, all right? Another large vodka Red Bull, then, Pratt. Lucy glugs and finishes a drink in one go, slamming the glass down hard on the bar. Far too many rounds later, we take a taxi back to mine. Beware the remains of an earthquake. I open the door and, to my surprise, find the TV missing, my favourite chair gone as well. The kitchen cupboards are open and empty. There's broken glass strewn over the floor. My crystal glass has been shattered into a thousand tiny bits, abandoned in the sink. How kind. Ouch. Are you sure it's safe here? Safe as any war zone, I say. Your room's upstairs to the left of the banisters. Shall I mount an armed guard for you? I thought you said you want a calm life. Trust me, I do. It's a mere hiccup in the journey of life. Maybe they're in cahoots. God, poor you fancying of a deranged lesbian and a mad psycho coming for you. Are there any differences, I say? I'm certain that this has been the work of a mad hatter wreaking habit. I bolt the front door and bid Lucy good night. The mess and the missing... We'll have to wait. Next morning, I walk down to find a very tidy kitchen and a note on the table. Thanks for sanctuary. Gone to work. See you later if you don't mind letting me in. No key. Lucy. Kiss. Would you like another chapter? Well, you'll have to wait till next time. The book's available on Amazon. Or you can download it. Download it. Uh, you can write to me if you'd like a signed copy. But share the word not the virus. Thank you very much. Good night.